The Tesla Powerwall 3. It's probably the most talked about pre-release battery in history. In this video, I'm going to share with you what I hope Tesla will do in their third generation battery, as they've already made the filings with a number of major utility companies and the Tesla Powerwall 3 release is imminent. Hi everyone, Joe here for Solar Surge, and for the past 10 years I've been helping families achieve energy independence using clean, renewable energy. Now, if you're new to the Solar Surge channel, on Solar Surge we talk about all things having to do with home renewable energy systems, solar panels, batteries, inverters, uh, sometimes even generator reviews as well. Now, in today's video we're talking about the newly announced Tesla Powerwall 3 which we expect to be released imminently, as Tesla has already made filings with a number of the major utility companies to make sure that the specifications of the new battery are compliant with utility regulations, so there won't be any problem with installations and interconnections once the product is released for consumers. Now, the first thing that I hope Tesla will do is incorporate a more modern chemistry. As many of you know, the current generation Tesla Powerwall 2 and 2 Plus uses the older lithium NMC chemistry. That's nickel manganese cobalt. Now the advantage of the NMC chemistry is it is more energy dense. So you can get more energy out of a smaller battery in terms of volume. Uh, it's also less weight that you need per unit of energy stored. But the downside of course is the potential for thermal runaway, which is basically just saying that in certain conditions, the battery cells can overheat and catch on fire, causing a chain reaction that looks almost like an explosion. Uh, obviously this is not what you wanna happen inside your house if you have a home battery storage system. Now, the newer battery chemistries, like the more popular lithium iron phosphate, offer a safer, cooler operating temperature uh, and in theory, no chance of a thermal runaway chain reaction type situation. The flip side or the trade-off though, is that the lithium iron phosphate chemistry is bulkier and heavier. So you need more volume and more mass to store the same unit or the same volume of energy. Now, I understand why in electric vehicles, when you're driving that battery around, you want a smaller, lighter battery. But for a stationary home battery system, you don't necessarily need uh, the most energy dense battery, especially if you're talking about a you know, potential safety hazard with the battery you know, having a chance of catching on fire. So I think moving to the lithium iron phosphate chemistry at this point makes a lot of sense. The second thing I'd like to see Tesla incorporate is some sort of generator support. Now, power outages are a reality, and especially in California, where you have the yearly wildfire threat, frequent power outages are a reality. And so one of the things that we advocate here at Solar Surge, if you wanna be truly prepared to be able to run off the grid or for a prolonged grid outage, is having a generator hookup option to back up your solar and batteries. That way, if the grid goes down and you hit a patch of bad weather where the solar panels are not able to keep up recharging the battery, you have an option to fire up a fuel burning generator. And while the fuel burning generator is running, not only can it be powering the house, but it can also be recharging the battery at the same time. Now, as of this recording, Tesla does not officially support generator connection. Now, that does not mean that you cannot have a generator installed on your house if you have a Tesla Powerwall. What it means is that the Tesla Powerwall in its current generation will not accept charge in from the generator. So you can run the generator, but if you run the generator, the Powerwall would be disconnected. If you're running off of Powerwall, the generator would be disconnected. So there, there'd be an isolation switch in between the two systems. That's how the system works today. Now, what I would like to see with the next generation Powerwall is that Tesla incorporates some sort of a bi-directional generator connection so that the generator can not only supply power into loads within the house, but so that it can also take a portion of that generator output and use it to recharge the battery as well. The next thing I'd like to see Tesla incorporate is bi-directional EV charging. Now, as many of you know, one of the big things that we've talked about this year in terms of new renewable energy home technology is the concept of bi-directional EV charging. Now, very simply, bi-directional EV charging means that 
your home's connection to your electric vehicle is a, a two-way connection meaning that you can charge the vehicle from the home power source, but you can also use energy stored in the vehicle battery as an auxiliary power source for your home. So it gives you an additional layer of backup. And this is especially important because electric vehicles are a major investment and a big chunk of the cost of the vehicles is the battery itself. And these batteries are much, much larger than today's home batteries. A typical home battery available today usually is between 10 to 15 kilowatt hours of storage. On the other hand, an electric vehicle battery could be between 75 and 125 kilowatt hours of storage. So several, several times the capacity. And if you're already going to make the investment in purchasing an electric vehicle, even a Tesla electric vehicle, wouldn't it be nice to tap into that capacity to boost your battery reserve or your battery running time for your home. So I hope that they're gonna be incorporating this as well. And finally, I hope that Tesla acquires Span Smart Panel. Now I know that may come as a shock to many of you, but that's the one piece that Tesla is missing now that I think just makes sense as a no-brainer in terms of the integration and the partnership. Now, part of a successful whole home solar and storage implementation is having intelligent monitoring and intelligent load control, meaning being able to see where energy is flowing within your home down to the per circuit or per appliance level, and then being able to control that flow, especially when you're running in a backup mode and you're running off of battery power, you don't necessarily wanna spend power on every device that's plugged in in your home. Rather, you'd like to be able to make intelligent decisions or program your smart panel to make intelligent decisions for you about where you'd like to prioritize energy if it becomes scarce because you're running on batteries in a blackout. Now, I think an acquisition of Span by Tesla just makes sense. After all, the founder and CEO of Span is a protege from Tesla, who was at one point in charge of the Tesla Powerwall division. And that's the one thing that Tesla is really missing now, and it aligns with their large picture strategy, which is to really be that total energy solution provider for the home and for the power grid at large, but especially for the home. And by controlling and offering the Span Smart Panel, it would basically put Tesla right at the center of power flow distribution within the home's electrical system. So these are my four things that I hope Tesla will incorporate in the Tesla Powerwall 3. The release is imminent now, so we're gonna see before long if any of these items make it into the final release. But if anybody from Tesla is out there watching, this is what Solar Surge, this is what Joe here would like to see in the next generation battery product. Well, hey folks, as always, if you're getting good value from the information that we publish on Solar Surge, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos coming out like this, it'll come up on your homepage and you can stay up to date with us. Of course, if you're in the process of looking at different solar power and battery backup options for your home, uh, if you need to get a price quote on any of the leading home battery or home solar systems, um, or maybe you already have a couple of quotes and you just need to get a comparison quote, as always, you can feel free to reach out to us at the link below there and set up a call with me or with one of our experts here, and we'd be happy to provide some pricing and some information for you. Well, folks, that pretty much does it for today's video. As always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.